Hello everyone, and for those who don't know me yet, I'm Joanna Pilatovic. And if you gravitated here by accident, or rather by synchronicity, um, this channel is about common sense staying in the middle, well, golden middle of yourself in your core. In times, well, there are always chaotic times, but now we have this peculiar uh, world situation and I have a question how many of you how many more of you have this peculiar situation of being young professional not one not knowing what to do where to go what job to apply to even apply for a job what's happening right now now so for some of you this situation actually started before a few months ago, but it goes on for for years. So you are, I would say, professional in saying, John, I don't know what to do. So this, yes, seriously, you can be professional in that if it goes for years and you're really good at it. And um, this is for any other professional or soon to be professionals, uh, people who are living abroad, and need to find out have some language difficulties in communicating and if you don't have a job come on you're not an expert you immigrant so i know that a lot of us like to introduce ourselves as i'm an expert i'm doing this or that and that's fine that's okay you need to sub sustain your image right um but i understand um so this one is about your passion versus what job to take or apply or not apply for those who also feel like you are in the slavery system. I will get to that shortly. And to all my lovely friends that I have honored to assist you on your journey uh, and uh, assist you in finding out because many of you who work with me or know me uh, no, that this is a process. There is no magic pill. I know we all want this. Uh, that within five minutes, we find out everything. This is a process and it takes some um, time to answer some questions and also pay attention to what's happening around us. Uh, and um, uh, yes, I cannot take all of the phone calls and my phone for a while is shut down especially when someone calls at five in the morning. I'm sorry, I'm sleeping. Um, most of the times I'm sleeping that time. So um, what I encountered recently is this typical that it's actually repeating for years. Anytime I work with someone very young and starting to find out what the career could be. Uh, so you probably encounter this feeling like you have to take a specific education because your environment tells you there is a pressure from your loved ones because this job, this education will give you money. I mean, good job first, of course, and then money. And you have totally no passion for it. And you don't know what your passion is about. You have no idea what to do. Or I would say worse, but I won't. I won't tell you that. You are an artist and you left to li live abroad. That's my case, but you know, I'm gonna stay quiet. I will be quiet for now about this. Um, so you work hard and uh, you get that, that education, uh, you get debt and that in a certain countries you have to pay for another 30 years and you're totally not happy. Then you get a depression or you diagnose with something and uh, and then you find me <laughs> uh, or you find someone else and uh, eventually I I encounter you somehow and you tell me this story so this is for you I hope to uh, gather all this information so you get an idea where to start and please 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 be smarter than I was because I was on that path many years ago uh, not so many actually but 10 is enough for me. I went through my own process in the Netherlands when I was living there. And I was also applying for those jobs, a lot of them every day. And um, then one day uh, I already had few and I lost many because none of them were my passion. Uh, some 
uh, some people who were working in those job agency they told me Joanna stop applying most of these jobs they don't even exist we have to put them out there because that's our job and you are wasting a lot of time if you want to apply for a job go from friend to friend get a recommendation from friend to friend you have to know someone but many of us we don't know the right people we don't have the right means uh, and we are not even in the right country for us and for a lot of us the language is an issue because even if you are speaking already the language uh, I heard uh, Dutch, uh, not Dutch, sorry, the Netherlands, a person who was speaking perfectly Dutch and she was telling me that even when she lives there for 20, 30 years, I don't know how many, uh, she's still not accepted or she doesn't feel welcome in a certain circles because she's not Dutch so her language always uh, will be a little bit off. The same is for the English language and sure i can speak english but because i'm not a native speaker there will be always this obstacle for me and so for other languages you have to really take that into account this and a lot of other things before you decide um there is nothing better than examples and um when i was in the netherlands and i was taking all these um, jobs that I felt under pressure and I was desperate. I wanted to dance, I wanted to express myself artistically, but all I got was cleaning jobs, uh, washing dishes, and uh, so on, and uh, some documentation in Dutch that I didn't understand, but I had luck, and I'm of course quoting that what kind of luck is that, but you know, I had to make some money and I was under this pressure and a lot of you may be in this situation and temporarily you have to take whatever is there and you feel it like you are in a slavery system because whatever you make you spend or you your taxes or the taxes are taking away that from you so i feel you in this and um, i studied that actually for a very long time when i was in the netherlands another good example was a lady who wanted to give me her cleaning jobs and she said something that really shocked me and I will always remember that one so now I'm telling that to you um, I asked her the question so how long you were doing those jobs and she told me I mean I just came for one year to make money go back to my country and have money you know so that's supposed to be for one year and I'm here 10 years and I ask her this question, so what happened to you? <laughs> I mean, you fell asleep for 10 years, what happened? You were cleaning on automatic pilot, I don't know. Uh, and she said, I don't know. I guess I just, it just happened. So this is what's happening when we don't pay attention or, or we are so programmed in our mind by different circumstances that we think we have to do this. So I asked her, so did, you, did you make that money? Can you now, I don't know what, buy a house or whatever? Uh, yeah, she had a little bit of money, but not that much. And she has to pretty quickly find another job in another country if she wants to survive. So um, this is what, <laughs> what can await for uh, many people and it is not because we are not conscious, because we are not thinking. It is also because of the our environment, situation, our um, the way we were raised up, our education and our means, um, not only financial means, uh, but also emotional means, psychological and uh, many other things. If we don't have our teachers that will lead us through uh, early enough, we are going to get lost so it's i'm just taking away that from you it's not your fault so you know um so more examples of course in my book doubtful rays of the light oracle number two number two uh if you want to find out about struggling times of the immigrant in the netherlands uh plus some nightmares and dreaming and all that paranormal aspect extraordinary uh, so, 
uh, I already knew when I was studying, the professors were always saying, follow the money, follow the money. And sure, it sounds very banal, and I would say follow the money if you want to investigate something. But if you want to have a fulfilled life, never follow the money unless money is your passion. There are some people in this world that money is the passion and they can do absolutely anything. They can adjust to any job because the money is the passion, not the job they are doing. They have a clear goal and they are really good at it. Uh, but that's another story. We, um, um, you know, even when I, uh, I'm an andrago from my education. And when I was studying and I had all these types and profiles, like if you are artistic, if you are a leader, what kind, what is your type? So according, if you know your nature, if you know your type, uh, we can already tell a lot what kind of job you will be better at. It still doesn't mean it's go it is your passion and your passion you have to unfortunately figure out yourself. Um, all of you, all of us, have always something that inspired us. We had a hobby, something that what we do makes us feel amazing, inspired, uh, and this is where you have to start to seek your passion. Before I get to that, um, I'm following my notes here so I don't tell you too many stories and I keep it to the point. So, you know, um, so I had to take all these jobs, of course, because uh, nobody cared if I cannot do something. And when you are in the desperation, this is not a good time to make a decision about your education, your study, your job, and what you, uh, you have to take these moments, even if it's days, even if you, unless you're in such a situation that the next day you have nowhere to go and you have nowhere to, uh, to live. And I was. Uh, in that moment, I recommend prayer and I'm not joking about it. All I did, I put my hands together and I asked God, please, please. And this you may hurt some of you, but I will repeat because it's very inspiring for those in the most difficult situation. Uh, I just asked God, please, if you want me to stay in the Netherlands, I need an apartment and I have no money. So all I can do, I can just water my plants. Uh, you can imagine what happened within half an hour. So, but I suppose, I, I think that my intention was clear that time and it also meant to be for me. I'm not saying that it will happen to everyone, but prayer, it's very good way because it puts you right back into connection to yourself, especially in the time of desperation. Um, now, um, I always had a feeling that, you know, Phoenicians were pretty good in, in trading and, you know, I don't know the history of that these times very well. We all know they created the money and uh, how it started, but in my books I, I complain a little bit about them, frankly. So, but uh, they created this, uh, this money system and uh, this is how it started. So the money are produced, the money uh, are numbers, and there are people, economists, bankers, that they know, uh, they learn, they spend all their life how to manage it. And because um, regular people, all they, they are trained, programmed in their mind to do, they are into getting jobs, they never learn enough about money because we are we don't know about it. And I didn't know that too. And I still don't know many things. And I had to educate myself a lot. And I recommend everyone this, uh, the book of uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Poor Dad, Rich Dad. And uh, what he says, what he claims, it's actually opposite what other economists say. So it's all to uh, figure out to you and see what kind of mean skills you have and where do you live because I don't know in every country you can do the same things and um, there are different rules 
So economists are advising to, to, to not have debts and uh, to not be forced to pay it all for another 30 years. And you know that very well, that you pay far more than you took the loan from the bank. Um, but Robert Kiyosaki says something different. So he says, use the debt in order to make money. And he is teaching to think completely different way. I was very much inspired by his words, by his work he does. And uh, he, te he tells how to do it, but I'm not quite understanding. If you, some of you know out there, you are invited to share it with me, seriously. Um, so this is two opposite things. It's not going to work to everyone, uh, but if you have this ability, I was always on the secure side, so I never took a debt and loan from the bank, and I had this wonderful privilege in Poland that I could go uh, and I didn't have to pay for my university because of I, I was lucky to pass an exam. I guess Nostradamus helped me a little bit, but that's another story. I'm not going to get into that one. Um, I, yeah, Nostradamus helped me to <laughs> probably pass the exam to university because I, I love paranormal and extraordinary subjects and I love to read about him. And that time I was just freshly reading about it and hearing documentaries. And this is exactly what I was talking about why the exam and I guess they were pretty impressed. So how to find out now you are in this system, you have to get a job and you don't want to go to the studies that you, you don't have a passion, but you don't know what that passion is about. So coming back to it, um, what do you do naturally every day? That's just very, very simple way how to find it out. Something that inspires you and if you lost your passion, you had it, you remember in the childhood or somewhere before, uh, I recommend this video about losing parts of the soul because it may happen that due to traumatic events, you lost that parts of yourself, whether you call it soul or personality, um, I don't care, but something was lost. So you have to get it back. Um, so something that makes you happy, make you feeling extraordinary, gives you pleasure and uh, you just, the time disappears when you do it. Uh, this is your passion. Once you figure that out, you may have some difficulties with linking it into a job and you know, it's get a job, it's everybody will tell you get a job. And this is what I heard through all my years when I was looking for a job. Nobody ever told me, Joanna, create a job because it doesn't sound so good, right? Create a job. It sounds scary. We're going to get to fear. I hope if I don't forget. Uh, so what inspires you is part of your passion. And now you have all these questions, how you can do that more in your life and how you can use it to make money on it or offer that what you enjoy to the world. And you are not focusing on about the money here, but you are focusing on how to offer what you love to the world. And it sounds like a banal coaching phrase, but this is how it works. Uh, so other thing is you have that, you have your passion, you have a slight idea how to implement that and maybe you create something, you get some product out there, you find people to cooperate, but you get obstacles and you have to be very honest to yourself. You don't have to be honest to anybody else, but to yourself is number one. Um, but I, I recommend honesty. Uh, so you know, um, state all of your obstacles, mental, emotional, health-wise, situational, place you live, environment, other people who's supporting you, who's not supporting you. A lot, uh, a lot of questions that I have for you to not answer instantly, but think about it or let it, let it be answered by your subconscious mind, by giving you image, 
maybe hearing something in your mind or just coming to you randomly, naturally, spontaneously. And a lot of what I learned was from Arnold Mindell book, uh, Working on Yourself Alone. That was one of my first books years ago, but a lot of coaches are talking about it and there are plenty of books uh, and uh, also spiritual, psychological, uh, the, the statements, the questions are similar. So here's just an example, the most important one. What do you need in your life? What do you want? How do you want your life to look like when you are fulfilled? Do not think about that great job yet or money yet. Take your time really with that if you can. So where are you going in your life? And this I am not advising but I'm encouraging you to find out as soon as you can because if you don't know others will tell you what to do and they do from early childhood we are told what to do we are trained and then it takes us some good therapy sessions to find out which thoughts and programs were not even ours and what it's ours and some people deal with that enormous emptiness because nothing feels like it's theirs. It's teachers, uh, some other parents, uh, aunts, uncles, you know, all people, they are always ready to stick thoughts in your mind. So taking time for that, enough time, and I cannot tell you how long that can be. It can be a month, can be several months or, or a week, depends. Uh, maybe you work already with yourself for a longer time, you are aware, it comes to you quickly, you have some insights, strong connection to your intuition. Next one, what do you value? What do you value in your life? What strengthens you and what weakens you? That's also important. What do you learn and or learned? No, and learned <laughs> from the situations in your past. So go back and analyze those situations, what worked in your life, what didn't, what were circumstances around this. It's crucial. Also, considering the inspiration part, if you lost it, if you feel burnt out, if you feel that there is absolutely nothing that inspires you right now and it goes on for years, go back to the times when you lost that inspiration, when it happened, what happened. Because it could be that there was something traumatic and pay attention to what people were around you, every detail. And these things, of course, I always, uh, it's always easier to do with someone. Um, what the situations, uh, difficult or happy ones, what they were showing you and what was required in each of these situations. So let's say you have the passion uh, you answered all these questions, you took a time for that, you are starting to get a pretty good idea. If you still get a moment for yourself and you don't have to randomly apply for jobs or take anything or you take something but also um, pay attention to stay focused on what you really want and daily gather your observations, studying it and to use it later on, um, you probably encounter the ways of creating a job, going into business, being an entrepreneur, or so on. And um, a lot of very smart people, I would say, always recommend, uh, when you are a freelancer, always get more than one, one source of income because you will lose some, different situations will happen in your life, but you will still keep on going because you have some other sources. Um, when you, the, the next, uh, this is actually a trap, so I will tell you already what will happen. Uh, in most of the cases, when people start to be excited again, they follow, they uh, publish book like I did, and I was so excited and I, and I burned out because of that. There is losing balance between pursuing your goal and pushing against the current because you want to try out so many things. You basically read smart books about 
100 things to do something and then you try to apply and you are almost dead by apply number 17 because it goes on for months and you work from morning to evening and and it seems like nothing much is done so when is the time for you to stop that's one thing um, it doesn't mean that you so you should stop pursuing your goal your uh, dream or whatever you want to accomplish or you feel that it's going to fulfill you um, but go backwards when you start it and if you feel overwhelmed or you're losing your health anything like that I always miss this moment until I have a real symptom so uh, so be smarter again uh, go backwards and trace so shut down shut down your phone i learned that one it's a good one uh shut it down all the notification all the social media sit with yourself go backwards and see what works how much time you put in a certain tasks whether you do promotion marketing selling i don't know it's it it's up to you uh and what was the results did it work or not and cut off everything what didn't work and then if you go on to try it out another thing uh, also also state it write it down because you are going to have a tendency being also on this automatic pilot uh, to keep on doing the same thing because you are programming yourself so it's natural you get up you do this thing over oh maybe I just do it one more time maybe it works this time if it didn't work for this certain moment because there is this there is this saying and thought like okay it didn't work but maybe now is the right time now it's going to work maybe but how much is uh, when it is enough for you and for everyone is different I know people that were searching for an agent and they landed in a deep depression and they cannot go on they cannot even publish anymore because the depression is so strong by this time that they didn't know where to stop searching for an agent and let go it doesn't mean that stopping it's not finding an agent it only means that perhaps in their life another path currently is necessary to take maybe if they would self-publish they would be discovered or maybe they would have some sort of a success and fulfillment but it also depends where you're going because if you're not going to be fulfilled with that then then that's that's another topic of course so go and cut off everything that didn't work and promise yourself by writing it down that this is what I'm not going to do anymore uh, so if you are applying for jobs and a certain feel never worked out uh, when you will stop sending those applications I had a trouble with that because I trained myself in the Netherlands so well that I was sitting basically six hours per day sending applications, cover letters, and my native speaker friends, they were checking everything for me. So I was absorbing everyone, you know, in it. And of course, I, I got this job and I was so unhappy because I completely wasn't a type to work in a big corporation. So... Um, uh, so analyzing it back it actually saves you time I'm sorry to say but there are no shortcuts actually uh, every shortcut like that not ever not every shortcut in life um, I like maps because they you can find shortcuts there I don't like this um, automatic you know GPS because uh, it's not smart I know some people say it's it's good but I I don't find it smart very well um, so shortcuts and finding out your passion and creating your fulfillment your life your path your journey um, if you try to take this shortcuts it ends usually in, la in loss of time energy health lots of money how many of you I hope not so many paid this money for five minutes of a psychic reading that will tell you everything and from now on your life will change forever 
And I'm not saying that there are people who cannot do that for you, but uh, a lot of people who are promising results within five minutes, I would be very suspicious. But that's just me. So um, I don't know if I told you everything. I hope so. Um, I do also have this feeling that we are and and Robert Kiyosaki was telling that that we are trying into getting jobs and pay taxes and then and, and that's it and uh, it also depends I'm not saying it's wrong um, it depends who you want to be because if you're a scientist you don't care about the money uh, you care about different things you want a Nobel Prize right and if you are uh, charmed by money then um, you go and work for Big Pharma, that's another story, but I'm not, not going to get into that one. Uh, so the last thing, it's about uh, planning and following your plan. And of course, with planning is a tricky thing because you have to be well prepared and uh, before you reassess and um, go back and analyze everything would work or not, you need the solid plan. And I recommend to do it with someone who went that path before you uh, and sure with plans don't stick fully to the plan because if you make plan you know that saying that God is really entertained when you make plans uh, so there are different ways and uh, psychologists some, some of the psychologists not everyone says that okay you want to be a musician buy equipment and then you're gonna try then gonna you are going to be very creative I don't agree with that one. I know people that uh, had uh, most expensive equipment but lacking inspiration. They never created anything. Uh, start from creating first and the equipment will find you. And someone even can borrow it to you or you can find friends where you can record. Uh, so for me, inspiration is first. I could not spend one day without being inspired by something. I am seeking for inspiration first. Um, and when you're planning, you have to take three factors uh, straight away into account. So your mind, your emotions, your focus, um, that's, that's three factors in one because there is more. Uh, so you have to keep staying aware about it, your doubts, paying attention to it, how you feel, uh, because this is also your fuel to be uh, able to fulfill the plan. If your mind is not straight to do something, you won't be able to do it because you just don't feel it. Another one is the stamina, chi, ki, energy, breath, food, of course, but breath, some of the prana briefers, breatharians, I hope I pronounced that one good, uh, they say prana is more important, life force, uh, chi, ki, however you call it, um, your energy level, it's crucial because you can think positive as you want, you can even um, uh, have a right intention if you don't have this basic energy health, uh, you cannot fulfill any plan. There is another factor, there is a place you live, and this is connected with astrology, your environment. Uh, some people have a good charts in a certain place, it's a place of power for them, and this you need to check with astrology. Um, there is also influence of those people around you, what they talking to you, do they believe in you? If they don't believe in you, that's okay. Just don't tell them about your plans. If the share with your plans with those people who are supporting it and you feel that support because um, it's not only you that you sabotage yourself there are also environmental causes that will sabotage your plan uh, or your plans and uh, this is also some part of being influenced by education uh, teachers some mentors we all are humans and we do make mistakes so um, so even if even the greatest therapist, uh, you know, they always go for supervision because they need to check the level of their objectivity and we are never objective. I think knowing that it gives us better chance to be most objective as, as much as we can. Um, 
So these are three aspects when you have to take, an, take it into account by planning. And um, there is one more thing about fear. When you work with your obstacles, you may encounter fear and fear are very tricky because they in they go into your symptoms and into your thinking and into your feeling and they are um I have very subtle enemies sometimes um if it's not so strong how for me i I always can say I was a master of being scared I wasn't a master of fear I didn't manage that um and as for an artist, I was performing I had to sing I had to dance so imagine that if I could do that and I'm telling you this because uh, you will know where I'm coming from it's not I just was scared to perform it's not just being scared I was losing voice my legs were becoming a cotton I was falling apart just like that and when someone in the public was asking me questions I could not speak I was whispering uh, or sometimes I open my mouth, but the words were not coming out. So um, if I worked with that, I know that every one of us can do this. Um, and just a few months ago, um, I tried, I was pushing myself, but I also had this fear. Why should I even talk on YouTube channel? You know, if I talk something I tell to those 30 people or 10 people I'm teaching and that's okay it's okay but um, I come forward and I do my best to pass this information and I told myself one thing and this may work for you this is a secret this is a secret for everyone so the secret is go and make mistakes the only way that you can progress in something is to admit that you are not necessary being in that current moment perfect you don't have to be perfect because there are people that can hear your message and they can benefit from it if you have something to share to pass it may save someone's life and i thank you for that because some of you called me years later and told me that the words i said and i don't remember what i said saved their life and for me that's the biggest thing so I told myself to go out there and be not perfect and how you do that how you you think you have to train you have to be perfect and you have to practice sure if you are a performer you rehearse unless you feel confident enough but there is a series of times when you are learning new skills when you go out there making maybe making fun of yourself i don't know but this is the way you are learning and it's okay because probably every one of us had this experience when someone else laughed at us it's totally okay many people laughed at me when i was living in poland and they were right and i i come from this perspective now and I think that all of us need to have this healthy um, uh, healthy approach to yourself sure I did things that I am um, I, I'm also laughing from the perspective it wasn't funny for me when I was falling apart that time but for many people it was because it, it just looked funny but from the perspective I can look at that and I can embrace that as an experience because I learned from that and I can understand what it means for others when I'm leading them. So you see, there is every, there is always a benefit in your experience. So I'm wishing you to have a lot of luck in rewriting your script of life. Start today. Uh, this banal thing. Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that one too. Do it now, step by step. Do a little thing every day, but this is your progress. If you give yourself every day one sentence, one action, whatever, but just one thing that you think of that can put you forward with whatever you want, you are progressing. Uh, we are never neutral if we don't progress I'm not gonna finish that one you know what I mean 
Okay, so wishing you a wonderful time. Let me know how it is going. And um, till the next time. Bye-bye.